we're going to do an activity to quite simply find the index of a fraction of glass. You can see up on the board right now a picture of a glass block. That's what we're going to use to find the index of a fraction of this glass. Now, you can see that it's sitting on a piece of paper. Also sitting on that piece of paper is this small little $1.25 helium neon laser from Dollar Tree. They're not all, of, all that good quality, but they'll work for what we're trying to do here today. You're going to turn this thing on. You're going to shine it, first of all, at an angle at this, uh, at this glass block. Then you're going to turn it on. You're not going to see the laser beam going through the air like this. It has to reflect off of something in order to see it. In fact, you're not even going to see it on the piece of paper. It's going to go parallel to the piece of paper. But what you are going to see is a little dot that leaves the laser right here. You're also going to see a little dot where it strikes and a little bit is going to reflect off of that glass block. So you're going to see a dot right there. You're also going to see a dot over here where it leaves the glass block. I want you to draw a little dot on your paper where you see those dots. The dots on the glass block and the dot where the light leaves the laser beam. Does that make sense? Now, I also want you to draw a straight line right here. Now, you can take a straight edge like a ruler and draw that straight line, but the easiest way to do that is literally just to use the block as your straight edge. It's a perfect straight edge, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, Make sure you have one hand on top of the block so that it doesn't move. Draw the little line right there. That's going to represent the boundary between the air and the glass. Now, what you're going to do is actually take the block away. Move the block. Take a ruler and draw, take a ruler, or just use the block as the straight edge if you want, and draw a line that joins these two dots together. Then draw another line that joins these two dots together. And then take a protractor, which I'll give you if you don't have one yourself, and draw a line right here, perpendicular to the boundary between the air and the glass. What is that line that I've just drawn called? It's called the normal line, right? Now we've got an angle of incidence right here that we're going to call theta 1. We can measure that with the same protractor. Angle of refraction that we call theta 2 here. Notice that it's smaller than the angle of incidence because, of course, when the light goes from the air to the glass, it's going to slow down and the angle is going to decrease. What I want you to do now on a table is record the angle of incidence. Record the angle of refraction. So it's theta 1. It should say theta 2. Record both of them. Then do what? Repeat it. Do it again. Do it again for a different angle of incidence. So just change the angle at which you've got your laser beam aimed. Get a new angle of incidence. Get a new angle of refraction. Do it again. And so on and so on. Get 10 trials for 10 different angles of incidence and then 10 corresponding angles of refraction. That's your data. Now, your analysis involves a calculation, but it's not a calculation like you've done before in analysis. In your, your current balance lab, to find the magnetic force, you multiply the mass by 9.81. Here, you're going to take the sine of each of these angles, sine theta 1. So if it was, let's say, 30 degrees, sine theta degrees is 0 0.5. Write down 0 0.5. Okay, if it was 60 degrees, sine 60 degrees, is 0 0.86, 866, I think. So write that down. Do that for theta 2 as well. So you're going to get 10 different values of theta 1, 10 different values of theta 2, 10 different values of sine theta 1, and then 10 different values of sine theta 2. So far, so good? What are you going to do with that? Make a graph. It's always what we do with a data table or an analysis table, right? The graph is going to be what on the y-axis? We'll go back to the table for a second. What goes on the y-axis? What is it, Jay? Theta 2? No, but you're close. Sine theta 2 is going to go on the y-axis, and sine theta 1 is going to go on the x-axis. Wow, that's going to look like an ugly graph, eh? Sine theta 2 and sine theta 1. Listen, it's not difficult at all. Okay, it's no more difficult than those other graphs we did. We've gone through now quite a few graphs where we've had to do an analysis to determine what the slope means. Okay, we're going to do that with this one as well. Okay, and it's not bad. It's going to give you a straight line. 
and that straight line should more or less go through the origin. We're going to take the, gra the equation for a general straight line graph now, y is equal to mx plus b, and change it into an equation that's specific to this graph. So instead of being y equals mx plus b, it's going to be whatever's on my y-axis, sine theta 2, equals the slope times whatever's on my x-axis, plus the y-intercept. There won't be a y-intercept, or at least there shouldn't be a y-intercept, so the equation just becomes sine theta 2 equals the slope times sine theta 1. Well, that's the equation that describes my graph. But now I need another equation that comes from my data sheet that has the same variables in it. In other words, another uh, equation that has both sine theta 2 and sine theta 1 in it. That's going to be Snell's law. We're going to say sine theta 2, or theta 1, sorry, over sine theta 2 equals n2 over n1. It could be v1 over v2. It could be lambda 1 over lambda 2. But I'm going to use n2 over n1 because remember what the point of this lab was, to find the n exterior fraction. So somewhere in here I need to introduce n. What's the value of n1, by the way? 1, because we're going from air to glass, right? So let's just, let's just take that away. It becomes sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 equals n2. And now let's rearrange this to take the same form as the equation for my graph. Take the sine theta 2 up, the n2 down. It becomes sine theta 2 equals uh, sine theta 1 over n2. Cross off things that appear in both. What are we left with? The slope on the graph equation is equal to what? 1 over n2. So we're going to say that n2 is equal to 1 over the slope, or n2 is equal to the inverse of the slope. Here's a quick question. Why did I not plot sine theta 1 versus sine theta 2? Because in the end, if I had done that, the slope would have just been n2, right? We wouldn't have had to flip it over. So why didn't I plot it that way in the first place? Which variable always goes on the y-axis? Always got to be the responding variable, right? Okay, theta 2 is the responding variable here. So I can't put theta 1 or sine theta 1 on the y-axis. As much as it would be convenient, okay, it's not according to the normal conventions of plotting graphs. So we're not going to do that. Okay, we're going to do it right. Even if it is a little bit less convenient, we're still going to do it right. Does that make sense? All right, a couple little things here, guys. First of all, um, these lasers, uh, they worked pretty good this morning, and we got pretty good results, I think, this morning, so I don't think we should have an issue with that. Sometimes they are a little bit finicky. Sometimes you've got to play with the, the, the battery cover a little bit because the batteries get out of place and it stops working. If you find that it's not working well, and you just can't get it working, just come to me and I'll give you another one, okay? The second thing is, I've got lots of scrap paper over here. You don't need to waste your good paper on drawing 10 different diagrams like this. Just use scrap paper, okay? And if you can, not because, you know, we don't have lots of scrap paper, but just because we don't want to kill more trees, okay? try to do a couple of them on one sheet of paper. Okay? If you can, it doesn't work out, that's okay. okay. But try to conserve paper as much as you can, and then throw it in the recycling when you're finished. Make sense? All right. We're going to go into groups of three here. No groups of four. Okay, maximum three. Um, every group is going to need the block, the glass block, and every group is going to need the laser. That's it. We can go at it.